Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we are going to talk about using oil paints on flesh tone. So uh, this is a really exciting uh, thing for me. I love using oil paints. I think they're a lot of fun. Uh, obviously when we start learning miniature painting we often stick to acrylics because they're more fitted to task. That is to say they require not much other than water and a brush to work and they dry very quickly and in general most of the sort of techniques and tutorials you see out there are suited to them. However, when it comes to something like flesh tone, we can really benefit from some of the elements that oils have to offer us. Specifically, oil paints take a much longer try time to dry. They're very easy to blend with. They're very easy to uh, create really translucent layers with, to create washes with, that kind of stuff. Uh, and they can be cleaned up anytime. There's no mistakes. That's the beautiful part about oil paints is that you can, they come with a built-in eraser because they do take days to dry. So you can always just remove your work if you don't like what you're doing. So here we've got a big giant that I'm, uh, that I'm putting together for uh, you know, an army of giants, basically. And <clears throat> you, his skin is pretty flat. So what this is right here is a zenithal. And then I shot some whole red from below. So you can see that like red tone that's there that's pretty weak. And then I just put a flesh tone on from above. That's it. It was a single color flesh tone, something out of like the game airline, like a middle flesh tone out of that line. I just wanted to get it to a nice neutral flesh tone. So all the what you, the variation you see right now is just nothing more than the zenithal and the sort of anti-zenithal of the red color and then the, the normal flesh. So what are we going to use today? Well, we're going to use a lot of fun stuff. When you're working with oil paints, the first thing you need to have is a good selection of synthetic brushes. Uh, you don't want to use your any nice brushes, any sables. Uh, you want to have something that's synthetic. And so I've got a couple different varieties here. It doesn't really matter. Some of these have very, very, very long handles. <laughs> Outrageously so, because they're meant for canvases. Uh, but that's okay. They'll still suit our purpose. You want some that's a little flat, some that has more of a tip, so on and so forth. Now, obviously, you also need oil paints. Now, I have uh, a whole bunch of oil paints here chilling on a piece of cardboard, and they've been chilling here for about, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes. And the reason I put them on cardboard is because it saps out some of the oil that's in there and will help them to, it reduces the drying time a little because I take the, the oil out. The drying time is still really long, uh, still in days. Now, the oils I'm going to be using are, and by the way, if you're curious about colors uh, here, which, okay, uh, this is a uh, burnt sienna right here. Uh, this is a uh, phthalo blue. Right here, we've got a little ivory black. Uh, we've got a uh, cadmium red deep hue. Over here, we've got some permanent green light. And then finally, some cadmium yellow pale. Okay. Uh, now, if I want to do, so those are going to slide off here. I've also got myself a little plastic plate just for if I want to mix them. I want something that's going to be relatively easy to work with where I can mix my, my paints uh, without... I don't really want to, you don't want to mix them on the cardboard because then they'll start leaching out too much oil. So having a, a non-porous surface like the plastic that you can mix on is, is generally beneficial. That's about all you really need. Now, if you want to go farther or have other things, of course, you can have stuff like, you know, you can have a little traditional like paint scraper thing like this, where you can pick up a little bit and mix them together. You can also do that with a brush. Up to you. The other critical element is, of course, some white spirits. Now, my brand of choice here is the Mona Lisa Odorless Paint Thinner. Uh, you can get this at various art stores and online. Uh, it truly, well, at least in my nose, it's pretty darn near odorless. I don't have much of a sense of smell, but when I'm using this and, and other people walk into my office, they don't get repulsed because paint thinner is obviously a very strong smell. So I've just put some of that over here into a little metal cup so I can dip my brush in there and work with that. Okay. Uh, and then obviously we need our mini and that's about it. 
Uh, now, in addition to those paints you saw, there's also some other little items I'm going to be using today. Specifically, I'm going to be using the oil brushers. These are from Ammo by MIG. Um, right here I have the Flesh set, which is a pale flesh, a pink flesh, and a basic flesh. So kind of interesting. Or what is it? Sorry, Sunny Flesh. And then I also have the Rust set here, or two of them. So I have Rust and I have Dark Brown. All of these, these are kind of cool. We'll be using these and I'll show you how we integrate these into the process as well. These are nice because they actually have flesh tones. You can mix your own flesh tones pretty easy out of oil paints. It's actually not that hard, but I thought we'd use these because they're really fun and it'll give you a chance to show those in action as well. All right, everybody, so I'm gonna film this as a quick pickup because I realized as I was washing this back that in the middle, I said, it's very easy to make your own flesh tones. And then I did everything with the oil brusher fleshes which if you don't have, uh, it's gonna be tough to do a natural flesh tone. So I'm gonna show you how to make your own flesh tone in the middle of this. So here we go. You wanna start with a solid red and a solid yellow, basically anything that's in the middle. There's lots of oil paints that are red and yellow. What you're aiming at is getting a nice solid orange. So we just take that We mix it all up. Basically, you want a nice mid tone orange. Okay. Now, once we've got that orange. realizing the problem of working on a little plate as I am right now. Grab a little bit more yellow in that. So we mix out an orange, then we bring in the white. So skin tone, as I've mentioned in previous videos, is actually basically orange. It's just a lighter version of orange. So in there and you can see how basically we're getting toward a flesh tone color like that's a pretty tan flesh tone right there okay now we're getting a little more pale Now we're quite pale, right? So it's actually pretty easy to just make your own flesh tones. It's just orange, any kind of orange you mix through red and yellow and then white. Now there's other things you can do uh, to enrich your flesh tone. So for example, if you want it to be a little colder, you can grab a little blue. So here we'll just, and you only, when I say a little, I mean like a little, like that's gonna end up being too much. So there you go, you can make a more shadowed flesh color through the addition of blue. Okay. You can add more red back in if you want to get a more pinky flesh tone, like something more cold. You can actually add red back into your original mix. Right, and then you get something that's a little more, a little more warm, or well, I shouldn't say warm. It'll make the skin look a little more like as though it's in a cold temperature, even though it is in fact of a warm temperature. But that's all there is to it. So mixing your flesh tones is actually pretty simple. You can mix in a little white spirits to them then, or something like that. And you can get lots of different tones of very natural flesh tones. So even if you don't have the oil brushers paints or anything like that you can still certainly create your own flesh tones. As long as you've got a red, 
a yellow, a blue, and a white. So basically your primary colors. Uh, you can mix all sorts of flesh tones out of it. That's really all you need to do the majority of your, your flesh tone creation. Uh, if you want to go super pale, you can even bring in like some more white. And you can see how you get a real, real bright flesh. So for your sort of pale flesh highlights, right? So that's it. That's how you mix a flesh tone. I wanted to make sure I had this in the middle so that that way, if you folks don't happen to have like the oil brushers flesh uh, colors and you still wanted to play around with making your own flesh tones, this gives you some options for doing so. So it's really cool because you can play with all sorts of different tones. You can bring in, you know, like sepias and stuff and have it be have it be sort of a, a darker shade of skin tone, maybe more Mediterranean or something like that. There's just all sorts of different options to it. So play with that. Uh, orange, or sorry, yeah, start with get to orange, red plus yellow, and then just the additions of white, blues, reds, and browns, and you can pretty much have a field day with just about any kind of skin tone you want. So there you go. Now, back to the video. Uh, and the nicer part about these is that they're kind of like ready right out of the little bottle. They're sort of like a little, almost a lipstick type thing. Where you can just pull them out and go directly to work. So, pretty cool. You still want to use uh, white spirits to clean them up, but they're they're real handy. I, I like these quite a bit. They're a worthwhile investment if you like oil paints. And they have a whole, this is just two of the ranges, but they have a huge number of different colors and options out there. Okay, and then finally you need some kind of paper towel because you're gonna be wiping like crazy. Oil paints are all about the wipey. Lots and lots and lots of wipey, wipey, wipey. Okay. So with all that preamble out of the way, let's get our miniature in here. So, uh, what do we want to do with this guy? Well, we're gonna wanna, I wanna give him a really nice, interesting skin tone. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start in the shadow areas and then we'll kind of work from there. So for the shadow areas, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, especially on the side sort of away from the light, uh, we're gonna take a little bit of that, uh, we're gonna take a little of the burnt sienna. Okay. Uh, we're gonna mix in just a tiny amount of that phthalo blue. Okay and a little bit of the cadmium red. And that'll give us a very, very dark, basically almost black color. Let's pull that up just a little bit more into the brown. Now, First thing you need to notice about oil paints is yes, they are very, very, very thick. Um, that's just the nature of the thing. That's why we have the white spirits. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our brush, we're gonna go into that white spirit and we're just gonna kinda mix that around. And if you wanna go faster, if you know you want to really get this working, you can use a little pipette Okay, and we can actually just pipette some of that oil or some of that white spirits directly into our color. Now you wanna be kinda of careful here because you can overdo it quite a bit. So we're just gonna put two little drops of that in there. And then we'll just mix that around. We're not trying to make a wash, we're just trying to make something workable that feels more like paint. Now, you will notice that this will almost always be much thicker than uh, your normal sort of acrylic paint, as it were, even when you have it thinned way down, just because that's the nature of the thing. Uh, there are other oils, another thing, other additives, I should say, you can add in uh, to oil paints. This video isn't going to specifically cover oil paint additives. 
Um, there are a lot out there. They have a lot of value. You can do things like shorten drying time or even extend a drying time. I don't know why you'd want to do that in our particular line of work, but you can. So there you go. You can see we got a nice deep brown hue there. Okay. Ah, the fun thing about oil paints is making a mess. This is a very messy thing, by the way, so just, you know, get used to it. If there was ever a time to wear your apron or your gloves, this is it. Okay. So. Cool. Wipey, wipey, wipey on our brush. And what we're going to do is we're going to leave a little bit of white spirits in that brush, but not much. Think of when you wipe off your brush, uh, and you see, you know, you want to have like a moist brush. This is the same sort of thing. So we're going to take some of that thinner, uh, thinner oil paint that we've made up here. Get a decent amount on the brush. Let's grab our homeboy here. And we're just going to drop some of this deep shadow way down into the the deepest areas. So wherever he has, like under his big old belly, maybe under his hanging, uh, I don't know, what would you call that, a moob? Maybe under his hanging moob there. And then up under his, his torso. Maybe a little bit up there, okay? So you can see how that's you know, a real thick line, just like any paint we would put on. If we put on a nice thick paint, we would expect much the same. The trick is then we're gonna go ahead and clean our brush. So again, go back into my white spirits here, rinse my brush around. And I'm being, I'm showing you like all these weird steps you wouldn't normally show. So you get a real sense of working with this stuff. I'm trying to be really detailed because I think a lot of people are intimidated by oil paints and it's not actually that scary. So there again, we wipey, wipey, wipey. Okay, and there it's nice and clean. Now there's still a little bit of white spirits in there. And you can test this if you have a glove on your hand. You see how when I run my hand across there, can you see that slight shine? There's still a little bit left there. That's what you want. Just a little bit in there. Okay. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in And we're just going to start smoothing along the edge there. Pushing that out. And every so often, I'll bring my paper towel back on a frame so you can see what I'm doing here. Basically what I'm doing is pulling it down. And then every so often, just wipey, wipey, wipey. Painting with oils is almost a more subtractive painting process than it is additive. So like right there, we've got that little spot where we probably don't want it. Cool. And just wipe that off. If we feel like we really want to get it, we'll go back into our white spirits. And we'll just soften that right out. Uh, this model was varnished before I started painting. Okay. Uh, in general, it's a good idea to varnish your, your acrylic paints. Oil paints won't really destroy that quickly your acrylic. I think there's a lot of people who are very paranoid about this and feel like if you even get white spirits or, or oil paints near a miniature that that hasn't been varnished they will get destroyed that's not really true um but i do like to varnish in between steps just as a save point and in general like it'll kind of make your life a little easier if you have it varnished especially if you're really working in sort of dry with a dry brush and scraping around a lot so you can see how that's nice and soft now still not perfectly smoothed out but that's okay if you ever want to, to smooth further, you start where you go to a different brush that's completely dry. So this has no white spirits on it whatsoever. This is just a dry brush. And you can just kind of feather the edge and it will always pick up all of this, but it won't do much more. 
then you can just feather out that edge. Okay. All right. So you get the basic process. Uh, so now you've seen how that's going. So now we're going to have some fun. Okay. Now that you've seen kind of how we apply a basic color, now we're going to start, we'll get a little nuts. Uh, let's play with our oil brushers here because it's much the same thing as what I have on my palette. It's just sitting in this container. So here I've got the pale flesh. We're going to put some of that right there on his, the edge of the moob. Sorry, let me move this closer to myself. It's like applying lipstick. Okay. Now let's go to our uh, basic skin tone. Now the fun part begins because you don't actually have to, uh, you don't actually have to wait in between steps. You can just kind of dab on the next one there. Maybe we'll get a little bit across there. Maybe we'll get some down on that side of the belly. Bring a little light up there. There, there, sure. Okay, I'm just doing this one side of him. And then let's, oh, let's take some of this rust color. Oops, sorry. Let's take some rust color here. This is just the oil brusher rust. Put a little drop out there. on that line, put some up there, sure, just kind of getting some colors where we want them, where they seem like they're going to be fun, okay, so now what we do is we, again, we're going to take, I'm going to take my slightly sharper brush here. I did run it into my white spirits, but then wiped most of it off. Again, we can test on the back of our hand and you can see I've still got a slight shine there, a little bit left. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start working that in. And again, subtractive process. start bringing that out where I want it. You notice that as I just keep working it around, drawing the colors together, it's just such a nice pleasant process because there's no pressure. You can always just erase anything you don't really like. 
and just push the colors together. If you need to grab more of a color, you always can. Just add it into the mix. The model itself becomes your... So oftentimes when we think about mixing colors, we try to do all this mixing before we ever come near the actual model. You know, we sit there and we try to blend all these different colors onto the uh, on the palette. Whereas here you notice all of my mixing was done just right on the model. Let's say we want to go for a little bit more of a brown hue. We want our giant to be a little more tan. I'll grab some of that sepia tone. So this is my uh, this is my burnt sienna from my normal Windsor Newton Winton oil colors. wipe that off. You can see that's the actual base color there. Okay. So let's get this bad boy a little more tan. And again, anytime you were painting normally, this would be so scary. Like just dropping colors like that onto something that you would spend a bunch of time blending on. Whereas here, it's no big deal. It's just like magic. You notice that like the most common thing I'm doing is wiping my brush off. <laughs> because again, this tends to be a subtractive process. Okay. So now we've got his, his gut, his big old gut out there. A little bit more well tanned, looking nice. You hit that, you got the got his bronze on. Uh, we can grab a little sunny flesh, sunny. Let's lighten him up a little bit here up top. Do to do, do to do, do to do. Just get some spots on there. Just keep working it in. Those old layers that are there are still perfectly wet, perfectly interactable, perfectly smooth to blend into, just like butter. Just all comes together. Okay. We can even work in other tones, other colors. Like I'm focusing obviously on this area right now, just because this is a nice part to show on camera. See, it's a big old belly. Big old belly. But we could grab other stuff. So for example, let's say we wanted a, a very slight yellow hue on some of our more sunnier flesh. We want to, you know, people talk about having yellow in skin tone all the time. Okay, we can do that. Let's grab a little bit of straight yellow hue here. Now that's real yellow. Again, would be scary sometimes. It's not scary for us. Not when we're not when we're rolling with oil paints. There is no fear. Because now we can just softly
blend that right in give it a nice if you if you think of like the uh a lot of the art you see from the 80s from fantasy stuff like frazetta and stuff like that they'll have these bright yellows and blue tones and stuff like that in the skin so you can really work in colors like that super easy um if you're doing you know osl work or anything like that it's a joy it's an absolute joy to do it with this because again it's just so smooth and simple if you want to make the skin a little more red let's say we want it, let's get a little more red tone into some of this shall we I'm just using the back of my brush to grab little parts of this, by the way. Oh, where shall we put some red? I think here under his shoulder should be a little more red. Maybe uh, up here should be a little bit more red. Maybe here on the side. Maybe down here by his waistline. Okay. Again, oh dear lord, what are we going to do with that bright, annoying, insane red color? How will we ever... Mitigate it. Have we ruined all of our good work? No, obviously not. that nice soft red tone in there easy so and we can just keep working it like there's no limit to what you can work in here that's what's just so amazing about this is that you can just keep pushing those flesh tones around every time achieving just a perfect blend stuff you'd have to spend hours and hours and hours on if you were painting with acrylics to get you know of thin glazes and stuff like that that now you can just achieve in minutes. So, uh, it's really that simple, folks. Be careful you don't do like I just did and put your paint into a different color that's on your paper towel. You do have to be careful with your wipey action. But you can see how we can get such a nice range of tones there. So, I'm going to uh, clean up for just a second <laughs> because this is very much... Like, I'm messy, my paper towel is messy. Uh, I'm going to clean up for a second, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to show you how we do finer detail. Because a lot of what I've been doing so far is this very big stuff. So what happens if we want to do something small? Then what? Back in a moment. Alright, we're reset. You can see my little guy here is all, uh, you know, smoothed out. Again, what is that? Eight different colors of paint I used? And it looks like I spent hours glazing, and that was no time at all uh it's truly an amazing thing to to paint with oil paints there's, there's just nothing else like it for for stuff like this especially for big sections of flesh but the challenge we might sometimes run into is what do we do with little stuff like this where or like his collarbone or these little stretches across his moves or over here okay like on the the folds this guy's got a lot of folds i don't know what to call them all you get the idea how do we handle those small spaces? Well, something like the oil brushers is nice because certainly they have a pretty fine tip. So we can come in and do a nice, gentle, careful application of those, but that still doesn't help us truly in the long run. Depending on the size of the thing. Okay. The question is then, what do we do with it from there? So the answer is pretty straightforward. It's just a smaller synthetic brush. Now this is actually where I like a couple different types of brushes. So something like a super small uh, uh, wedge tip like this is pretty nice, or a triangle tip or anything like that. Because what you can do is you can come in and you can just kind of skate right down the edge there pull it out with that tip and then wipe and kind of come up underneath and 
And you just tend to have a lot more control with something that's shaped like this. Okay. You can see how we got that nice and smooth in there. We can keep pulling it down. Same up here on this line. We didn't get his collarbone. So let me see if I can just... Instead of wiping, we'll put some of that paint to good use. All right, so we can bring out that collarbone, just smooth it right down. If we want to get a little deeper, darker color in between there, we can do the same exact thing. So maybe we'll take a little bit of our... Uh, sepia or sienna mix it with a little bit of our red get a nice middle tone there something like that we can use a little edge brush and we can just take that tip just drop it right down in there okay maybe we'll get a little bit here under the under the moves Get some coloration, some moob coloration. I, didn't, I bet you did not guess when you clicked onto this video that you would hear the word moobs like 40 times. But yet, here we are. You know, life is full of surprises. That's what I say. So then we just go to some white spirits with that. And make sure it's nice and clean. Again, we can test. See a little bit of still reflection there. blend together. Soften that right out. Okay, easy. And of course the final thing you can do that is really nice with these is besides uh, everything I've shown you so far, which is working a bunch of different any kind of color you want, uh, into there like I could start putting blues over here to bring down the shadows on the shadow side or under his neck or something like that There's so many different options of what I could be doing. Oh, we forgot to smooth the moob shadows You gotta you gotta always smooth your moob shadows. Everybody knows that um, But beyond what you've seen me do so far the other thing you can do is take and make a wash So like let's take something like his feet his big ugly feet so obviously these have a lot of little texture in them, stuff like that. So we can always just take a whole host of white spirits. Get a nice thin version of, uh, of some of our colors here. I'm just gonna work over, I'll bring my palette onto view so you can see what I'm doing. So here I've got, we'll get rid of that reflection. You can pre-make a whole bunch of this into a uh, into a container, or you can just kind of make it spot as you need it. Um, if you're gonna make if you're trying to wash a whole figure, then I highly recommend that you uh, you make something like in a cup, like I've I've got my white spirits in. Mix it out like that in a little mixing cup or a ramekin or something of that nature. And you can test it beforehand, so you can grab the back of our hand. We can run it like that to see, make sure it. Because it's using oil, not water, the capillary action will be a lot stronger. All right, and you can just wash that out. We'll wash both of his we'll wash both of his big feet while we're down here. Get that area all near his toes. He's got uh, he's got a bunch of folds here on the back of his foot. We'll grab those. We can also take some of that. Let's up the red quotient on that just slightly. Okay, let's 
Again, we can test. Yep, looks great. We can just hit his whole face. Now, this is going to be pretty strong and powerful. You notice how, but you'll see how it just runs down in the cracks. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, Vince, Vince, yeah, I, I get it, man. I've, I've seen a wash before, homie. You're not, you're not breaking new ground for me. We have products for this. Why are you talking to me about wash? I, I've got washes. They're sitting in a pot right over there beside me. They're great. Hey, I agree. They are. But one of the tricks with normal washes, unfortunately, is that they dry. And they dry rather quickly and they can pool and they can cause ugly things to happen where they pool and build up interesting thing about uh interesting thing about washing with oils is that uh they don't suffer from said problem so instead with oils when we've got that so i went ahead and washed his hands all his little fingies sorry there you go. So the interesting thing about oils is that because they take so very long to dry, even in wash form, which by the way, washes will dry faster than big thick paint. Generally, the thicker the oil paint, the longer it takes to dry. However, we can go get ourselves, these are little makeup wedges. You can buy these in giant packs, super cheap, and uh, they're perfect for this sort of thing. We can just sort of, we let that sit for a moment. You really only need to let it sit for a minute or two. And then you just take your makeup sponge and you just kind of... And you see how that remains in the low parts and smooths it out all at the same time. Like magic. Okay. We can do the same thing with his face. And you can see how those recesses stay nice and shaded, but the upper parts have no staining and it helps smooth it out. Do the same thing with his hands. The longer you let it sit before you wipe, the deeper it will seep in and sort of the more of a strong effect it will have. You can also come back if you've got little areas you want to touch up. Uh, you can also always come back with your regular brush and you can kind of continue to smooth that out a little bit. Okay. So there you go. That's oil paint on flesh. Like I said, it it'll just you'll feel like a wizard uh when you're working with it because it's especially great for big models like this that have a lot of flesh on them so anytime you're painting a big monster or something larger scale this can just be an unbelievably powerful tool it can even work in 28 millimeter um but you have to have a, a much finer control of your oils you want to sort of you often want to pre-mix them a little bit and and have a, a set of brushes you trust and know your way around because you need to work in a smaller space but on something of this size this is just fun incarnate you can just play around with this all day and again whenever you're whenever you don't like anything guess what you can always just grab a little white spirit strip it right off easy peasy so there you go that's using oil paints on miniatures i hope you saw um, just how you can do this effect and make it work it's a lot of fun uh, painting in this way and a little hair hanging from him uh, it can be whether you're going thick and smoothing out and that standard subtractive method whether you're applying a bunch of different colors and then just bringing them all together as you saw me do multiple times or whether you're uh, or whether you're just thinning it way down and creating a wash in all events it's a powerful powerful tool that because it has so very different properties to the acrylic paints we're used to is just unbelievably powerful. Now, as some final thoughts, uh, here are just some answers to some questions. How long does it generally take to dry? Well, it varies and depends on the brand. If you have something like an Optilung, they dry a little faster. 
Uh, they're a little more meant for, for this kind of painting. And so generally they'll be 24 hours-ish, maybe a little longer, maybe a little shorter. It depends a lot on thickness and how much you how you apply it. Uh, for the Winton paints, you want to give them one or two days to kind of set uh, if, you, if you're planning on doing more work over it. Uh, I will generally varnish over a layer, um, but you can then do acrylic paints on top. You don't have to, but if you're just starting out, I would recommend you do. Um, you can put acrylic paints over the top of this in a day or two without any issue. They will be a little more slippery is the best way I would describe it. Like you'll have a little more give than you might be used to with your acrylics. But as long as you've given it a little bit of time, you can put acrylic straight over top without varnishing. It's not going to be the end of the world. Uh, that being said, if I was you, I'd wait a day or two, varnish it out, and then paint. You'd probably make your life easier. Um, the uh, do you need to to you know use like specific kinds of white spirits? Will just your white spirits or paint thinner you have that are more commercial grade stuff? Will it work? Yes, it will, but it's going to be very very stinky. So, you know, be aware of when you're indoors. This is flammable stuff. It's not great. You want to make sure you're using all of this stuff in a well-ventilated area uh, because, you know, it's kind of toxic. Uh, don't lick your brushes ever when you're working with oil paints. For the love of all things holy in the universe, please. Um, do you should, like, as I said at the beginning, importantly, make sure you're using synthetic brushes, not sable hairs or anything like that. And uh, basically, go have fun. Mess around. Uh, there's so much you can do with these. You can go crazy with colors. You, If you've ever had trouble blending big flat surfaces like skin and you want to achieve something that looks wonderfully real and varied and interesting, oil paints could be the way that you could find to do that. It's so much fun to work with. Um, it can go well beyond this. We'll do more oil paint videos in the future, but I thought starting with flesh is kind of one of the places where you can have the most fun. So there you go. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that very much. If you did, give it a like. If there are more questions you have I didn't answer, feel free to drop those down in the comments. I realize this might be some new territory for a lot of folks, whereas some folks this could be very old hat. So uh, please do just ask any questions you've got. Uh, I will make sure to answer all of those. Uh, I thank you very much for watching this one. Uh, this is so much fun to do. I've been looking forward to sharing this one for a long time because I just love painting flesh with oil paints and I wanted to share with all of you. Uh, so give it a like, subscribe for additional hobby cheating, new videos here every Saturday. But as always, I thank you very much for watching this one and we'll see you next time.